Hello everyone and welcome back to the Beginner Ruby series. Today we're going to continue on from where we left off previously, which is going to involve doing some looping. So there's a couple different ways that we can do a thing in programming a set number of times or an unknown number of times. Today we're going to focus on the unknown number of times. So in this case, what we want to do is use something called a while loop. So we'll say a while loop is used when we don't know uh, how many times to run the thing. Now this isn't necessarily true because there is a way we can use a while loop a set number of times. But for this case, we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll run with this. So we'll say while true, then we want to do something and we'll want to do an end. Now I want you to get into this habit immediately where we have um, we have a way to get out of the loop without fail. So in this case, because we don't have a way to do it yet, I just want you to type break, and then we'll put all of the other code before that break. So what I want to do here is just say puts hello world. We're going to puts hello world, and then we're going to have this keyword break. And what this keyword break is going to allow us to do is break out of the loop we are inside of. So now if we run this with rb main.rb, we'll see it prints out hello world one time. Now, I don't want you to follow along with this, but let's pretend we didn't have this keyword break right here. If we were to then run this, this is going to do what's called an infinite loop, which is very scary. Uh, and can blow up your computer, not literally, but, you know, uh, metaphorically, uh, it will just run indefinitely. And you'll see as soon as I hit enter on this, it's just immediately spamming my console. I can hit control C to stop it. Uh, but you can see here, even if I try and highlight this, it just it, it's running too many times. So that's why you want to have this break here or something similar where when you run the program, it only does this one time. So now let's look at a better way to do this. Let's say I have a counter, which I'm gonna set equal to zero. I'm gonna put this counter outside of the while loop, but above it. This is important because now we can use those same conditional operators we used in the previous video to say while the counter is, uh, let's say less than 10. While the counter is less than 10, again, I want you to, the first thing you should think about is how to get out of the while loop. So what I want to do here is say counter is equal to counter plus one. So now every time we go through this loop, the counter will go up by one until eventually it's done. If we run this now, we can see we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 prints. And the reason why this works is because the counter is set to zero initially. Although it's less than 10, because we're starting at zero, we're kind of cheating because it's doing zero and then one through nine, which is 10 numbers. So that's why this prints out 10 times uh, because we're doing a little bit of cheating here. If we started this at one, we would see that this will only print out like nine times, right? So, okay, how does this help us? Well, there's a couple different ways that this could help us. I think we've covered input on the channel before. So let's go ahead and let's try that. Instead of doing a counter of like 10 times, which is neat because it lets us do something a set number of times, let's just say I have a, oh, well, actually, let me do this. Let me comment this out and then we'll do another loop down here. I'll say I have a user input is equal to, uh, let's do a gets.chomp and let's put something like, uh, what is your favorite uh, color, right? And then we'll do one more puts where we say, press Q to quit. Okay, so now we have our user input. We're gonna get it right here. What I wanna do now is say, while the user input, and this is gonna be another, uh, another thing, or another operator, comparison operator, we can say does not equal. We use the exclamation mark and equal to say does not equal. And then we want this to does not equal the letter Q. And we can say end right here. I'm going to put a comment here that says uh, does not equal means does not equal. And then we'll do one more that says this is the opposite 
of double equals, which means uh, equals, right? So does not equal is just canceling out this. So in the case of like, if our number was 18, if we said does not equal 18, then it would, it would work for any number that does not equal 18. But here, because it's a while loop, we're saying while the user input does not equal Q. So this will return true as long as the user input is not equal to Q. As soon as the user input is equal to Q, this will then return false, which will stop the loop from working. So let's come in here and let's say puts you typed, uh, you typed, and then we can again use this, this idea of putting our user input into a string. Then we can say, uh, what is your favorite color again? And we can just repeat this code for now. This isn't really the cleanest way to do this because we're repeating code, but this will at least allow us to test this. So let's go ahead and let's run this program now. So we can see what is your favorite color? Now, of course, we're not validating this, but let's play along. Let's say blue, you type blue, what's your favorite color? I type in test, that would also work. Type in one, two, three, that would also work. But now I wanna quit. So I'm gonna type Q and you can see that exits the program. So this is your first uh, look at like an actual program that would work for this. Now there's one other thing you should be aware of. What happens if we're running this program and I type capital Q? Well, that doesn't work because it's comparing this capital Q to this lowercase Q. So there's a couple ways we could do this. One of which is a uh, thing you can use with strings that allows you to convert it to a lowercase temporarily. To do this, we can type dot down case. Now in some languages, this might be too lower instead. Uh, oops, like that, too lower. But in Ruby, I think they use down case. We can go ahead and we can try running this. I'll type capital Q and you can see that works. We exit out. I can type lowercase Q and that also works. But importantly, if I type blue in all capitals, that stays all capital blue. If we move this from here to here, we can then get it to always be down cased. So let's try running this. Let's type capital test, all caps. You can see that gets converted to a lowercase test. But now what happens if, oops, what happens if I type capital test again? You can see capital test this time stayed capital test. Why is that? Well, up here we're calling dot down case on our user input, but you'll notice we're not doing it down here. So subsequent calls won't also be down case. So we need to make sure that we do it down there. Now let's go ahead and let's type Q to exit out, type this again, uh, and then we can do test that gets converted to lowercase. I can type test again, it's still lowercase, which means now if I type a capital Q, it'll get converted to a lowercase Q to quit. The reason why this might not be ideal is sometimes you really want your user to be able to yell something, but you still want to downcase it for your check just in case they type a capital Q to quit. So now I can scream at the top of my lungs, but if I type a capital Q, it still lets me exit out of the program. This is just one example of where the loop might run an indefinite number of times or an indeterminable number of times. You don't know how long the user will be playing with your program until they want to quit. So you just keep running it with this while loop until you get to a point where you say, all right, the user's done, they wanna go home now. In the next one, we'll take a look at how to do things a set number of times where you already know roughly how long something needs to run before you're done with it. Similar to when we use the counter in the while loop. It's just there's a, there's a better way to do it than to use that counter. But for now, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.